Let's go. Put your hands together. One go. Can you clap your hands? One, two, ha. One, two. I hear. I hear you. Go. One, two, ha. ha. I feel like clapping. I feel like jumping. Let's go. I feel like jumping. I feel like jumping. I feel like moving around. Let's go. I feel like moving around. Let's go. I feel like moving around. Hey, I feel like moving around. Move around. I feel like moving around. Hey, I feel like moving around. I feel like moving around. I feel like moving around. I feel like shouting. Oh, 
Kibena, Seya, Hibena, Hibena, Chile, Kibena. One, two, go. I was an Aseya, Seya. Yorobana, Seya, Ramu. Aha. Hobibona, Seya, Hibena, Hibena, Chile, Kibena. designed for you that is hanging may it be brought down to you in the name of Jesus through the death of Jesus on the cross that we celebrate today may the announcer of good news look at you you will rejoice you will shout for joy you will exalt the name of the Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Can we celebrate the Lord? Are you happy? Amen. Let us sit. Amen. I would like us to look at the gospel text that we read at Mass today. Luke's Gospel, chapter 1, from verse 26 through 38. There the word of God says, In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth. He was sent to a young virgin who was engaged to a man named Joseph of the family of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. The angel came to her and said, Rejoice, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Mary was troubled at these words, wondering this what this greeting could mean. But the angel said, Do not fear, Mary, for God has favored you. I pray for someone here that you be favored in the name of Jesus. You shall conceive and bear a son, and you shall call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the kingdom of David, his ancestor. He will rule over the people of Jacob forever, and his reign shall have no end. Then Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? And the angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy and shall be called Son of God. Even your relative Elizabeth is expecting a son in her old age. Although she was unable to have a child and she is now in her sixth month, with God nothing is impossible. Then Mary said, I am the handmaid of the Lord, let it be done to me. As you have said. And the angel left her. May the Lord bless his word this night. In the name of Jesus. I pray that someone here will be blessed with a child tonight. That you will have a divine visitation in the name of Jesus. 
Amen. This evening, I want to reflect with you. Angel Gabriel passed by today. Tell your neighbor, Angel Gabriel passed by today. Ask the person, did you see him? What did the person answer? Eh? He didn't see him. Who is Angel Gabriel? I say he passed by what? No, 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 no. And what is he carrying? Angel Gabriel does not go empty handed. He goes with what? Gifts. Of what? Fruitfulness. Who will take the gifts? Somebody will catch a baby this night. Eh? Not just a baby, a twin baby this night. In the name of Jesus. Angel Gabriel passed what? By today. Amen. Amen. Let us see whether Angel Gabriel passed by. And whose house is he going to? Who? Are you sure? Will you open the door for him? Amen. I pray for you. That he will enter your house. He will not miss your house today. In the name of Jesus. That particular text of scripture we know it too well. Mary and Gabriel. But before Mary's visit, or before the angel's visit to Mary, the person in the media room, I'd like you to be fast. I'd like you to go back to that chapter of Luke's Gospel, chapter 1, from verse 1. Mary's visit was the second visit. The first visit of angel Gabriel was to the house of Zachariah. That was the first visit. So this was the second visit of Angel Gabriel. And when Angel Gabriel passed the house of Zachariah, move a little down to verse 3, from verse 3 or thereabouts. When he went there, he visited Zachariah, not just in his house, but he visited him in the sanctuary when he was ministering to God. He was performing his duty at a place of service. The angel Gabriel came. And when he came, he came with good news. Tell your neighbor, he came with good news. Angel Gabriel does not go without what? Good news. Wherever he arrives, good news what? Comes. Amen. When I got Sing that song to the Lord. Yeah. 
tonight in the name of Jesus. And so when he came to that house, he visited him. And he said to him, you will have a son. The man began to argue with him and said, how can that be possible? He said, I'm an old man now. And my wife is also old. Zachariah disqualified himself and his wife. But grace will prevail. And grace prevailed. But he paid for a price. He said, I'm old. So he did not believe. Then the angel said to him, precisely in verse 11, the angel said to him, I just left from the right hand side of God with a good news for you. And here you are doubting me. What I have brought to you will come to pass. But because you doubted, you shall remain dumb until that child is born. And that was what happened. And then the angel left him. He finished his service and he came out and everybody was waiting for him to bless them. He said, he has become a dumb and deaf man. Lack of faith. He did not believe that the word spoken to him will be fulfilled. The second passing by of NJ Gabriel was cheat the case of Mary. Now, my dear friends, there's something I want us to get from there. Zachariah questioned. Mary, Zachariah questioned without faith. But Mary questioned with what? Faith. He said, but I'm a virgin. Why, you know, my guinea? Okay. How will it be possible? Say with God, all things are possible. And he said, he's well with you. She said, everybody say, everybody say, Jesus, everybody say, everybody say, everybody say, everybody and because she said that, it came to pass. She did not suffer punishment. But Zachariah doubted. Mary did not doubt. She only expressed her concern and her fear. Said, how will it be possible? I'm a virgin. I've never known a man. He said, with God, all things are what? Possible. Oh, Mary, impossibility, possible. That is our God. And that is your God, the God of what? Impossibilities. So Mary became pregnant with a child. Dear friends, I am sure that as at that day, too many people in the Jewish community were expectant of the fulfillment of the promise of God in Isaiah chapter 7. When he said, A virgin shall conceive and shall bear a son. I'm sure so many young women were warming up to be the person to carry that child. They prayed for it. Some probably prepared themselves. Just like some young girls and young men prepare themselves to marry a particular girl or a particular man. Or someone else ends up to marry that person because of the person's clouds. But Mary was chosen by grace. Mary was chosen by what? grace and prepared for the fulfillment of this promise of God. Child of God, I speak to someone here this night. You might be living in fear. Ah, 
How will I survive? How will it go? I reassure you of the impact of grace in your life. Grace is the vehicle of impossibilities. Grace is the vehicle of unmerited favors. Like Mary. God visited her. And this is the message of Gabriel when he came. Remember I said Gabriel and Gabriel passed by. Today he is going to pass by someone today. And he's coming with fruit of gift of fruitfulness to someone tonight in the name of Jesus. He came to Mary. Now, if we go back to that text of Isaiah chapter 7, something very remarkable happened there. Ahaz, the king of Israel, was under siege. Three kings came together against him. The king of Damascus, the king of uh, Rezin, and the king of Aram. They came together against him. They prepared to go to war against him. And so the information got to the house of David that this is the conspiracy against him. So he was overtaken by fear. How would he survive and manage to fight three kings at the same time? And then the Lord saw that and sent a message to him and said, Go and tell him that he should make a request of the Lord. Why is he overtaken by fear? He should not fear, but rather he should believe in the God who had made a promise to David that his dynasty will last what? Forever. He said, no, I will not put God to the test. The Lord said, you've got to put me to the test. And he said, no, I will not. So because he said, I will not put God to the test, God said, this is the sign I will give you. A virgin shall conceive, and rulership shall be upon his words, shoulders, to prove to you that I am God. Child of God, I don't know the challenge that is before you. I don't know the mountain that is before you that is making you to be afraid. I announce good news to you this night that Angel Gabriel is by your side. That that problem that seems unsurmountable, God is aware of that problem and he will bring answers to that problem in the name of Jesus. Wherever the angel of God appears, impossible circumstances become possible. Amen? Amen. Did you hear me? Did someone hear me tonight? I want you tonight to provoke your angel. That your angel, your guardian angel will be a bringer of good news for you. Believe in divine presence around you. And if you believe in divine presence around you, mountains will fall and collapse before you. They will melt before you. Amen. In the book of Genesis chapter 18 from verse 1 following, Abraham was sitting by his house under the oak tree and he saw three persons who, who appeared. Three men. Or if the word of God says God appeared to Abraham. In the form of men. In the form of angels. And they made to like pass. And Abraham said no you do not pass me by. Come to my house. He welcomed them. He made food for them. Entertained them. And gave them water to drink. At the end of that episode, they were about to leave. They said, where is your wife? He said, she was inside. And he said to them, they said to him, by this time next year, she will carry pregnancy. Or by this time next year, she will have a what? A child. Who was giving the message? Who was giving the message? heavenly messengers, call them what? Angels of God. They carry good news. What was the news to Abraham? 
Child of God, are you hearing me? Are you following me this night? What was the news they gave to Abraham? Was it the desire of Abraham? The desire of Abraham was it that he should have a child? No or yes? Yes. Turn with me to Genesis chapter 15. In Genesis chapter 15, he said to God, How can you say you will bless me when I am childless? And the slave boy in my house will inherit all the blessings that you have promised me. In Genesis chapter 12, God has said to him, Leave your father's son to a land I will show you. I will make you father of nations. Your descendants shall be great. Yet he was childless. And in chapter 15, he challenged God and said, How can I be following you? Following you. The Lord said, Come out, count the stars of the earth. And he counted and count. his neck started pinning him. He said, and God said, No, don't bring it down. Keep counting. And the Lord said, I will bless you. I tell someone tonight, you've been waiting. God will bless you. I say, God will bless you. And he will bless your generation after generation in the name of Jesus. In chapter 18, they told him, we shall come back next year. Your wife shall carry a child. And Sarah laughed. Amen. See, there is something about women. Is there any man in this church? Are there men in this church? If you're a man in this church, raise your hand. Raise your hand. Wherever you, in fact, every man in this church, stand up. Every man in this church, stand up. Praise the Lord. See, some of you don't know women. From today, respect your wife. What did I say? If you are a man and you have been beating your wife, you are looking for trouble. If you have ever been beating your wife, stop. What did I say? What did I say? Because women are vehicles of blessings and curse. I will tell you what I mean by that. With women, God is soft. With women, God hears every of their prayer and cry. Never cause your wife or a woman to kneel down and lift up her hand for you before God and cry. You will be in trouble. If you are a man, your wife causes you and says, in your business you will never succeed. I bet you, you will seek the face of God and it, you will need to appease her to renounce that curse over you. You know why? They are special in the eyes of God. From today, if you ever maltreat your wife, desist from it. Treat them well. Sit down. Let me not stand you for too long. Now, let me tell you why. Amen. In Genesis chapter 2 and 3, I think that should be chapter 3 or thereabout. Who ate the, who ate the fruit first? Huh? Who ate the fruit first? Eve ate the fruit, Abby. And when she finished eating, what did she do? Huh? She cared for the husband. Okay. When Adam came back, what happened? Huh? Who gave? Gave who? What? The fruit. The forbidden fruit. And Adam did what? Adam ate, Abby. Few minutes after Adam ate, Eve had eaten since six hours ago and slept and woke up waiting for Adam. Adam just ate. As soon as he finished chewing, God came knocking. Adam, Adam, where are you? Eh? God can be what? Adam, Adam, where are you? And what did Adam do? God called and called. He hid. Finally, he summoned the courage to show up. And God said, Where have you been? He said, I heard your voice in the garden and I did what? 
Because I was what? God said, who told you you were naked? Yeah. Have you eaten the fruit? He said, Say the woman did what? By the Lord of justice, who should be punished first? Eh? Woman. But now who get the punishment first? Men. When I don't hear them. The punishment that will do your wife, now you suffer them. Now men. God said, because you have done this. The punishment started with who? Adam. Praise the Lord. Abraham's wife laughed. What happened? What did God say? Did, was she punished? Was she punished? God said, they only asked, why did she laugh now? She denied. She lied. And God looked over it because she's a woman. Because she's what? Was there any punishment? Men. When I hear them, when I see them. Praise the Lord. Zachariah in Luke's gospel said to the angel, But I'm old. My wife is old. He said, Because you asked that. that you will remain dumb. Again, punishment follow. I talk through. No, are you following me? The angel went to Mary and Mary said, Ah, how can that be possible? I'm a virgin. He said, Don't worry. The Holy Spirit will do what? Overshadow you. You are blessed. Was there punishment? Men, be careful. When it comes to woman, God forgive me or I'm not committing sin. God is partial. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Tira <laughs> believe they are looking at me like this. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> what can I respect women? Oh, make hmm. can I respect women? Oh, in John's Gospel, chapter 8, the woman who was caught in adultery. She was supposed to be stoned. They dragged her to Jesus. What did Jesus say? He who is without sin, let him be the first to cast a stone. He started writing. What happened? 
What happened? Everybody started leaving what? One by one. Also, eh? Until the woman was left with Jesus. And then Jesus said, looked up and said, Woman, has nobody condemned you? He said, Nobody. He said, Neither do I condemn you. Go and see no word. When I joke with women, be careful, oh. The same thing in John's Gospel, chapter 4, the Samaritan woman. She was a prostitute. But Jesus forgave her because of her. Jesus stayed put until he drew her back to himself and got her converted. And she became a light and evangelizer to others. The people who came, Jesus used her as a vessel to reach out to people. If you're a woman in this church, you've never blessed your husband. When he's going out tomorrow for work, pray for him. Speak a word of blessing over your husband. If your husband's work or business is not doing well, go there, stand and make a declaration. God will honor it in the name of Jesus. If God does not honor it, come and ask for the pen. Make declaration over your men. Be humble enough to come down to your wife. Tell your wife to speak a word of blessing over you. That's why you must be at peace with them. I don't know what put me to that side. That is not what I want to talk about this evening. But that's how the Holy Spirit wants it. Amen. We are talking about the angel of God passing by. And so they announced to Abraham and his wife, though she laughed, but they did not count that as a problem. They still gave their message of blessing and they walked away. The angels are passing by. Or oh, Angel Gabriel is passing by today beside someone. In Genesis chapter 28, Jacob was on a journey and he got to a place. He got tired and he decided to sleep. Who were those passing by? He had a dream. And the word of God says, the angels of God we are God. Ascending and what? Descending. In that place where he was lying down. And God came and stood over him. Watching over him. Because the angels of God were coming up and down from the sanctuary of God. That place became a ground of blessing. For Jacob. When he realized himself, he exclaimed, Oh, I never knew that God is in this place signified by the presence of his angels and what was the message that was given to him the Lord said to him I will be with you on this journey I will protect you on this journey you shall be fruitful on this journey and you will come back greater than you are going Amen when he opened his eyes he said, wow. Then he said to God, if you will be with me on this journey as I go, if you will bless me on this journey as I go, if you will protect me as I go, I shall come back here to thank you. And he made a vow with a stone, a symbol of offering. Amen. Amen. The angels are passing by with good news. And they are telling someone tonight through the presence of Jesus before us, you shall be blessed. The land of Potako shall be a land of blessing for you. It shall be a land of fruitfulness for you. This ground consecrated to Elohim shall be a place of your blessing, the ground of your blessing in the name of Jesus. You shall be established. That's what, that is the message that the angels of God bring to us. Amen. Amen. The angels are what? Angel Gabriel and the host of angels are passing by today with a blessing for someone. Can I hear you say amen? 
Can I hear you say louder, amen? In the book of Judges, chapter 13, those in the media room would like to see that text of scripture. A family had lived for years with a child in the person of Manoah and his wife. And the woman went to farm. To farm. And all of a sudden, she saw a heavenly figure. Chapter 9. I don't know what the text you are bringing. I said, Judges chapter 13. The book of Judges chapter 13. And she saw a heavenly visitor. In the person of an angel. Because the Israelites were being menaced by the Philistines because of their sin. God allowed them to be menaced and dealt with by the Philistines. But then, out of grace and mercy, he decided to redeem them. And then the Lord sent an angel because they needed a leader who will navigate them and fight back their enemies. And so the Lord sent an angel to Samson's mother and told her, you will have a child and you will name him Samson. He will be a Nazarite, someone consecrated to the Lord. And the woman said, Bigo, chere. I'll see you again. Chere. No, be only my ear go hear this. Another ear will do what? Hear it. She ran. I started shouting, Mano, I come. My eye don't see my waiting. My back. They called the man. They said, Come and see. A heavenly visitor who said to me, I will be pregnant. And the man came and said, Wait, repeat what you told my wife in my own ears. Let me hear. And he said, Yes. What she told you is true. Your wife shall bear a son. And you will name him Samson. He will be a man of valor. He will be a man of power. He will be a deliverer. He will be a leader. He will deliver his people from the Philistines. So that the menace will stop. And fear will leave the land. Amen. The angel was passing Angels do not just pass by. They bring good news. It passed by Zachariah. And a child was born. Samson. Sorry. John the Baptist. It passed by Mary. And Jesus was what? Born. It passed by Manoah's wife and the farm. And Samson was what? Born. It passed by Abraham's house. And Isaac was what? Born. Good news. Good news for somebody tonight in the name of Jesus. They will carry your matter to heavenly sanctuary. And from the right side of God's altar shall blessing be released for you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And so he was born. Some of you are waiting. Many of us are waiting for good news. For good news. We provoke our angels tonight to go to God's sanctuary and come back with the good news for you. In the name of Jesus. When the angels of God carry good news, nobody can stop them. Not even territorial powers. Not even regional powers will stop them. The experience of Daniel in, in the book of Daniel. When he began to pray, his message was released. The angel of God was carrying it. There was an engagement of war and battle. 
so that that message will not get to him. But God released another angel from his sanctuary who came to engage the territorial power, the prince of Persia, so that the message will get that. I pray for someone tonight. If your message has been engaged, that that message will be released in the name of Jesus. That God will send another messenger from the sanctuary who will come to deliver your message in the name of Jesus. Territorial engagements will be suppressed and oppressed in the name of Jesus. Your message of fruitfulness, they have locked your womb. I pray that they will come and open that womb in the name of Jesus Christ. They have locked up your business that you will never grow. You shall grow in the name of Jesus. When they pass by, Difficult circumstances are pulled away. Amen. 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 I'd like us to look at Mark's Gospel, chapter 16. After they killed Jesus. Mary of Magdala with the other women set out to go to the tomb. And as they were going, they had a concern. Ah. They bought spices to anoint the body of Jesus. It said after the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Salome, bought spices to go and anoint the body of Jesus. Very early on Sunday morning, at sunrise, they went to the tomb. But they had a concern. On the way, they said to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? It was a very large stone. Then they looked up and saw the stone had already been what? Rolled back. Hey. He came. I say what? Power. So they entered the tomb. That door that you cannot enter. That place you cannot enter. Before you arrive, the angel will open it. Where they saw a young man sitting at the right side wearing a white robe. And they were alarmed. Surprised. Don't be afraid, he said. I know you are looking for Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified. He is not here. He has been raised. Look, here is the place where he was placed. Now, go and give this message to his disciples, including Peter. He is going to Galilee ahead of you. There, you will see him just as he told you. What message was that? What was that message the angel gave? What message? Good news. Good words. Wherever the angel passes by, difficult circumstances melt away. Hindrances give way to success. They, they, they had a hindrance before them. Before they came, it was taken care of. I provoke your angel to go ahead of you. I provoke that in that place that they have used something to cover that you shall not pass, that the door will open before you arrive. When the angel visited Paul and Silas in the prison, what happened? All the keys did what? Broke. And chains were what? Broken. When the angel of God entered the prison, Peter was taken by the hand. He said, wear your trousers. He wore. He said, put your bed. He wore. He said, put your shirt and he put. He said, follow me. I said, someone follow me this night to Jesus on the altar and you will be set free. I don't know who has imprisoned you, but the prison gate be opened. Amen. Under the command of Elohim, Elohika, let the prison gate be opened in the name of Jesus. Amen. I don't know who has locked up your business 
in the spirit world that it shall not be located and they have thrown the key away. Physically, we cannot locate the key. I provoke the angels of God of Jeremiah 16, 16 that they will arise this night and fish the key out in the name of Jesus. I provoke the angels of God who are hunters of God in the spiritual realm that they will hunt down every opposition in the name of Jesus. Your pack of success will be restored unto you in the name of Jesus. Amen. When the lion of Judah come, yeah, now the lions with back can go. When the lion of Judah come, oh, all the lion will run away. When the lion of Judah come, oh, and all the lions will run away. And he said, no, don't weep. Through that encounter with Mary, Jesus appeared and said to her, Mary, and she said, Rabboni, which means master. The angels lead the way to Jesus, to God. Provoke your angel tonight. And something will happen. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. 
they reveal secrets. When they come, they reveal truths of God about you. They give you gift of vision and knowledge of what you don't know about. They protect and they lead the way. In Exodus chapter 33, the Lord said to Moses, tell the people to move here. My angel will go with them. I will send the angel. They said, no, we don't just want the angel. We want God's presence to go with us. The people began to cry when God said he was not going to go with them. And then God said, okay, together with the angels, I will go with you. Child of God, I pray that God's angels and God will go with you tonight in the name of Jesus. Where you have been afraid to go into that you will boldly go in there and make success and progress in the name of Jesus. They reveal to us whether our offerings are accepted from God or not. When they pass by, they reveal that. Those of you used to bring ton five naira and ten naira to church. They will tell you this money where they give God, you know, you know work, you know jail. Those of us who refuse to appreciate God, they say, you know work. Acts chapter 10. The man in the media room, let me see that. Acts chapter 10. By the time of prayer, Colinus went in to pray. And while he prayed, said about three o'clock one afternoon, when he had a vision in which he clearly saw a what? I want to hear you. When he clearly saw what? An angel of God come in and say to him, Colinus, he called him by his name because we have gotten guidance angels who guide us. I'm not going to the choirs, I'm not going to the category of the angels, but I'm talking of angels generally this evening. He stared at the angel in fear and said, what is it, sir? The angels answered, God is pleased with your prayers and works of charity and it is ready to answer you. And now, send some men to Joppa for a certain man whose full name is Simon Ward Peter. Divine message knowledge was given to him. In that text, that particular text is saying your prayers and charity. See, some other translations will say your prayers and charitable acts stand like a memorial offering before the presence of God speaking for you. Who revealed it to him? The angel passed by to give him the message. I pray that God will favor you with such a privilege in the name of Jesus. I don't know who might be standing on your way. May your angels meet them. May your angels stop them. God says in Psalm 91 verse 11, I will put my angels in charge of you. That was the quotation devil quoted for Jesus. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High and abides in the shades of the Almighty says to the Lord, my refuge, my God, in whom I put my trust. And he went ahead and told him that God has promised he will put his, just jump, he will put his angels in charge of you. Did God make such a promise? Yes, God made such a promise. His angels will be in charge of him, but he did not need to toil that with Satan. There was, no, there was no need for negotiation. In the camp, when the Philistines came against the Israelites, God put confusion in their midst through his angels. They began to kill themselves. The Monas and the Moabites in the camp began to fight such that Jehoshaphat and his host of Israel did not fight. They only collected the butchers because the angels of God were already at work in their midst. Child of God, so shall they fight for your battles for you in the name of Jesus. If you believe it, can I see you stand and shout a louder amen. If you believe it, can you begin to speak to God tonight that God should provoke your angels for you.
There are angels that God has put in charge of us. They reveal mysteries. Things that you don't know about. What is your relationship with your angel? Mary said to her, let it be done to me according to your faith, according to what you have said. There is a reason why God has positioned angels. Like I said some time ago, there are territorial demons and regional demons. There are also territorial angels and regional angels. Territorial and regional angels who are walking in our favor. Child of God, speak to those heavenly personalities and powers that they will intercede for us and that our blessings will be released. When they passed by, Mary became pregnant. When they passed by, Zachariah's wife, Elizabeth, became pregnant. When they passed by, Abraham's wife became pregnant. When they passed by, Manoah's wife became pregnant. May fruitfulness be our portion tonight in the name of Jesus. Child of God, open your mouth and begin to pray for fruitfulness. I want a pregnant women that are in this church, I want you inside the sanctuary. If you are pregnant in this church, just walk up. Up. If you are mm. pregnant in this church, I want you up here. If you are also looking for the fruit of the womb, I want you up here. I want you up. If you are looking for the fruit of the womb, up. Those who are pregnant, enter the sanctuary. Enter the sanctuary. Lord, I put my trust in you. Tell Jesus to bless you. The angels of God are here. And they come with gifts of fruitfulness. They come with gifts of fruitfulness. Lord, I put my trust in you. You had all I like. Oh, I put my trust in you. You are all God. If you come and on you, I put my trust in you. You are all God. Child of God, I want you to begin to address God this very moment. Open your mouth. Talk to God for fruitfulness. Especially for those here who are looking for the fruit of the womb. He is the one who gives child. Sometimes the report is that I put my trust in you. You are not the life. Angel Gabriel, we invite you. We know you are here right now. The word of God says, You said to Zachariah, from the sanctuary of God. From the right hand side, you have brought a message of fruitfulness to him. So many of them here are waiting and waiting. Waiting and waiting. And it seems it's ageless. Endless. I ask that you visit them this very moment. I don't care the report of doctors. But what I care is that message that you have brought. That no, Elizabeth will be a you. child. You are Lord of my heart. That Zachariah will be a father. Be that Abraham will be a father. That Abraham will be a father. That Abraham will be a father. And they became such. Lord, I confess my love for you. You are all that I want. 
I present these women unto you now. Oh, I confess my love for you. Visit us this very hour. I welcome the heavenly angels this day that you visit this sanctuary this moment. That these difficult experiences of the children of God will be taken away and they will experience God's love and mercy. Child of God, I want you to pray. See the angels carry message. They carry message. Bless them with fruitfulness. And those who have already been blessed, protect the child that you are putting in their womb. God bless them. Bless them. Lord, I confess my love for you. Bless you them. Grant self delivery to those you have already blessed. Make a name for yourself in these experiences of your daughters and your sons. Can I see you lift up your hands? Lift up your hands. As you lift up your hand, I'd like you to close your eyes. Imagine the angel of God stepping out from the altar to come and embrace you. Open your hand to receive him. Angel Gabriel, the angel of fruitfulness, the angel of good news. Come. 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 Angel Gabriel, come. 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 Locate your daughters and your sons at this hour. Locate them. Are there those standing here or kneeling here that their womb is closed spiritually? There are spiritual projections that close wombs and even close male organs that they are unable to impregnate women. Father, I ask for healing at this moment in the name of Jesus. Any womb here that is closed spiritually, may that womb be opened in the name of Jesus. Have they thrown the key? Have they thrown the padlock away? Is this something that is tied? Is this something like a doll baby that has been used as a symbol? Is it the wrapper that you were given on the day of your wedding? Is it a particular pot? I break it right now. 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 In the name of Jesus. Lord, I ask that your angels of Jeremiah 16, 16 will arise. Fish them out. It doesn't matter the depth of the ocean. It doesn't matter the place of, that it has been hidden. Lord, you know secrets. Let that secret be reviewed now. Father, that secret that is not known to the open eyes, to the ordinary eye of man, I provoke your angel this moment that your angel will locate it and lose it in the name of Jesus. Is it in a shrine where it's been done? Father, I raise a higher altar at this moment under the corporate unction of this gathering tonight that that altar will crumble. 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 And your sons and daughters will be liberated in the name of Jesus. Lord Zachariah was liberated from the altar. Liberate them from this altar. Whatever that is in anybody here at this moment that is standing on this sanctuary that is dedicated unto you. 
I decree death unto that power in the name of Jesus. Every power, every power that is operational in your